We're going to go into the book of John in the New Testament, the 10th chapter, starting, we're just going to read 14 and 15. But I want to bring you into the context of this. Jesus, on the last, just at the end of his life, you know, he taught. And he taught his friends about his life and about why he was here on planet Earth. And he helped us to understand many things, some of it about crucifixion, but they really didn't understand that at, the point, at that time. But he wanted it to be clear to everyone that Jesus cares about every person. Did you know that? And he did what he was on earth and those he interacted with, but he even spoke out beyond those that he was directly with. And so that's where we want to look today in John chapter 10. If you have a Bible that has red letters, those are the ones that Jesus spoke, and he actually spoke these words. And that's what makes it so significant to me. Because he wants to speak to us. And he wants us to know that he is um, the good shepherd on this Good Friday. Let me read verse 14 and 15 for you. He said it this way, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me. Just as my Father knows me and I know the Father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. That's what he did on this day so many years ago. Because Jesus is the good shepherd. Yes. Amen. Maybe today he's your good shepherd. He's my good shepherd. Maybe you're here and you say, I'm not sure he's mine. Well, I want to tell you that you're not here by chance. And as we progress today, as you hear the word, he can be your good shepherd. You know, back in the ancient days, shepherds were ones that took their life very seriously. Shepherds were ones that owned their herd of sheep, and they looked after them. They prized them. They, they, they valued their herd. And as they did... They took it very seriously in such a way they knew that their sheep depended on them. They knew that they were the ones that had to protect their sheep. They were aware of whatever circumstances were around. They had to provide the right environment for those sheep. And just as those shepherds knew in ancient days, Jesus is our good shepherd. He has promised that he would take care of us. He has said that when he went to the cross at Calvary, today we're celebrating Good Friday. It's kind of funny to celebrate a death, but we're celebrating the fact that Jesus took upon himself everything concerning you and I. Whatever you have to face in life, Jesus took that to Calvary so we could be free, so we could have hope, so we could see tomorrow in a different light. And just as those shepherds were the ones that provided for their sheep, Jesus is the great provider for you and I. The Bible says he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The wealth in every mine belongs to him. He says that he shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. You see, it's not by what you and I can do, but it's by everything Jesus did at Calvary for you and I. That's why we're here today. That's why we look to Good Friday. Not because, you know, some, some religions... Today is a very sad day. Today is a day of mourning. It's, it's a day that's so sad. And death is sad. But for us, the good shepherd gave his life so that we could have life. So for us, there is hope in today. Because it may be Friday, but I'm telling you, Sunday's coming. And the power of God is still alive today. The good shepherd was the one that provided everything we needed, but he also protects us. You know, in the Old Testament, David, he was out there with the sheep as a shepherd boy. And the Bible says that when the bear came along, David took that slingshot. We have a picture of the good shepherd. Here's a slingshot. 
just like David would have used. And he took those stones and he killed the bear. He killed the lion. When a predator came to take his sheep, he took care of it. He provided and protected his sheep. But Jesus is the great protector. He is the one that knows everything about us. And he is looking after our lives. And he is watching for us. But you see, we have to recognize that he is the good shepherd of our life. Whose good shepherd is he? He's not just the good shepherd, right? He's our good shepherd. Can you say that as well? Can you see him as the shepherd over your life? The one that leads you and guides you? The one that cares for you? The one that uh, provides for you, protects you? Is that how you see him yourself? You know, regardless of, well, our, our upbringing kind of paints a picture for us uh, of who Jesus really is today. I, I never grew up knowing anything about Jesus other than what I would hear from others. Until I got, uh, until I got married, until I met Jill, and, and we got together, and, and then I found Jesus as my personal shepherd. <laughs> one that I could rely on. One that I saw actually cared for me personally. See, this is the difference between some some types of religion that are, are not personal, not individual, but Jesus actually cares for us as people. Is that right? Are you a sheep? Come on, let me hear a ba. <laughs> Love having the youth together. Praise God. All those ba, oh, good sheep. Yeah, good sheep. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but look at what it says at the end of verse 14 there. It says... Um, I know my own sheep, and they know me just as my Father knows me, and I know the Father. That, that speaks about intimacy, that, that Jesus actually knows us personally. But, but catch this. When we read other portions of the Bible, we understand that God actually knew us before we were even born. Isn't that amazing? While we're in our mother's womb, God knew us, knew, knew our future, had a picture of our life set out before him. In other words, he knew us before we even had the cognitive ability to know him. And now he wants us to know him for who he really is. Someone who cares for us, someone who loves us individually, who knows the, the differences. We're, we're not all the same, are we? I'm not the same as you, you're not the same as me, and I know you're happy about that. Because <laughs> we, we, can, we can have our own individuality, but God certainly knows us. I, I, I like it when I think of a sheep, a little, a little baby lamb. I, I think we have a picture of a little lamb. And so when I consider that, isn't that, per how many want one to take home with you? Sorry, we don't have, but uh, the children want one. Moms and dads, come on. Forget it. All right, forget it. But the beauty of that, the, the innocence of a little lamb. See, the shepherd saw the lamb being birthed. The shepherd helped the lamb being birthed if there was difficult. And it's that type of intensity that Jesus has in our lives. Regardless of how old you are, you're still a sheep and he's your shepherd. And he knows you. He knows what nobody else knows. He sees what goes on behind closed doors, and he loves you. He sees what goes on in your mind. He knows your thoughts, and he loves you. But it doesn't stop there. He also wants us to know him, and to know him personally as well. How can we do that? Well, I discovered that when I actually asked Jesus to, to be the Lord of my life, a new relationship happened for me. My, my, before I knew about Jesus, and then when I prayed that, that simple prayer of surrender to God, it went beyond knowing about Jesus to knowing Jesus. I can't explain it in scientific terms, but I can tell you in personal experience and reality that you can know Jesus yourself 
He wants to be known by you. He will reveal himself to you in ways that you can understand and clarify his relationship, his love, his commitment to you. As Pastor Jill said, in, in ancient days, the shepherd actually owned the sheep. They, they were his wealth. They, they were what determined his status, how many sheep he had, how healthy the sheep were. Jesus wants us to know he sees us just as valuable as that. Just as valuable as they did in ancient days of the property they had, that you are valuable to Jesus. He sees you, he knows you, and he's revealing himself to you. When I, when I looked at that, my friends, I, I was thinking of how we're all different. Just like you get a, a herd of sheep, and they all look different. There's black ones and white ones and spotted ones. I think we, yeah, you can see the, the sheep there. Where, where are they? In the green pasture close to the water. But the thing that I discovered is many times the shepherds would bring their sheep together at night so that they would have protection, so they would gather together for warmth as well, and there would be many shepherds and many flocks of sheep together. But in the morning when it was time to get up and go to their individual pastures, the shepherds would rise up and they would call for their sheep, and their sheep knew their individual voice and responded to the shepherd. And they would follow the shepherd as he walked and took them out to the pasture that he'd chosen for them. Wow, what can we learn from that? Jesus knows his sheep, and we can know his voice. Yes. When he speaks to us, we can know he's talking to us as an individual, maybe us as a family unit. He's speaking to us and he may be talking in a way that we see that that applies to us. We don't have to put it on someone else. But he, we know he's talking to us and we can follow him where he goes. He said that he knows us. We know him just like his father knew him and he knew his father. The Bible tells us that Jesus saw what his father did and he just copied what his father did. Yeah. That's the level of intimacy that Jesus wants to have with each and every one of us, where he can call your name. Did you know he knows your name? <laughs> yes, he knows your name, and he can probably pronounce it better than me. <laughs> Some names are difficult, but guess what? To Jesus, he knows your name, he knows your life, and he calls you in a way that you can hear and come to him and follow him. And that's his desire for each and every one of us. He is the good shepherd. Amen. And he wants us to come to him. But before we come to him, as we're celebrating today, Jesus, the good shepherd, laid down his life for you and I. He actually gave his life so we could walk in freedom. And a shepherd always cares and is willing to take a risk for a sheep. He's willing to go to the end to protect his sheep. Jesus gave his life. Remember the story of the, the, in the New Testament, one of the sheep was lost. The shepherd left the 99 sheep to find the one. He was willing to take a risk, to go out at night, to go into the dark, to go into the unknown, to find that one. He never leaves you or forsakes you. It doesn't matter how far you go away from him. He is always there looking for you, ready to receive you back. He is a good shepherd that will always care for you. You may feel like you're all alone. You may feel like people don't understand. You may feel like I don't relate to what you're saying. I wanna tell you today, Jesus is always there for you. I may not understand, but Jesus always understands. He is there waiting for us to reach out to him because he is the good shepherd. And when we wander off, he is willing to receive us back. It doesn't matter where we go. It doesn't matter what we do. He is always willing. He gave his life, 
And today we celebrate the fact that he gave us life for you and I. Isaiah 53 says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his stripes, I am healed. I tell you, that's reason enough to rejoice. See the good shepherd here, the sheep were strained, and he went out over the rocks. It didn't matter what the terrain was. It doesn't matter how big that mountain is in front of you. It doesn't matter what the relationships are saying. It doesn't matter what the finances are saying. The good shepherd will rescue you. He will reach out to you if you will listen for his voice. You know, when I was a child, I could be outside and I could hear a voice yelling, come home. But if it wasn't my mother's voice, I didn't go. Anybody else like me? You see, I knew my mother's voice. When she called, I knew my response had to be now. You see, Jesus is calling us. It doesn't matter how rocky your life is. He is calling to bring you home. And when he brings you home, he will lead you beside still waters. We saw that picture of the sheep and the green pastures. He will take you. And he will rescue you. He is such an amazing God. His very life he gave so that we could have life. His very life. But you know, even some of us that recognize he is a good shepherd, we don't take it personal all the time. When life comes up around us, we tend to forget. And we try to figure it out ourselves. And he's waiting there all the time to help us, to rescue us. You know, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done as on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus gave his very life so that we could walk in his will on this earth. So that what is in heaven we could receive even now. It's not just in the sweet by and by. But it is today, it is alive today for us to receive. And he, the good shepherd, is looking for us. You see, it's very personal. When he gave us life, he gave us life so we could receive the fullness of all he has. The Bible says in Romans 10 that if we will confess with our mouth and believe in our heart, we shall be saved. And that salvation isn't just to get us to heaven. That salvation is eternal life starting the very day we say that prayer. That we hear the voice of the good shepherd and we respond to his voice. And as we respond to his voice, he helps us with what we need. And he helps us to focus on who he is. You see, he is about bringing me into that place where I can receive all he has for me. But sometimes we think it's something somebody else is going to do. They're going to change so everything will be okay for me. But you see, he's concerned about us as individuals. He's concerned about us personally. No matter how young you are to how old you're getting. You know, some of you never heard that song that uh, the Brampton Music Theater sang today. I remember when that song came out. Sandy Patty. I remember it. But you see, it doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what you can remember and what you can't remember. Jesus wants to come to you right where you are as the good shepherd of your life. And if you're in school and you need help with your paper, he wants to help you with your paper. I've experienced that from a young age where I didn't know what to do in school. And when I cried out to Jesus and I said, Jesus, help me. He brought thoughts to my mind I didn't know I still had and helped me. Maybe you're facing something in your business and you don't know which way to turn. 
the good shepherd is here for you today. Many people have relationship issues. It's not about the other person doing what I want. It's about me receiving the good shepherd and coming into line with what he says. And as I receive him, as I grow strong in him, as I love like he loves, he starts to work on those relationships. Sometimes I find out that I change more than the other person. You know, he's amazing. He just wants to help with whatever area of your life. And today, if you have your Bible, we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 11. And we're going to share communion together, one of the ordinances of the church. Because Jesus shed his blood on Calvary that he could be your good shepherd and come and help you with life today. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we'll read from verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you. The same night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. See, there's nothing that you're going to go through that Jesus didn't carry for you. Betrayal is one of the worst things, but Jesus carried it for you. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take heat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat the bread and drink of the cup. So we're going to, as the singers sing, we're just going to allow God to examine our hearts. And I encourage you, whatever you need to get right with him, take this time and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And let's get our lives in line with what he has done for us. If you didn't receive a communion cup when you came in, just slip your hand up in the air, please, here, and our ushers will help you. If you're at home, I encourage you, run to the fridge, get some juice, get a cracker, and let's get prepared as we listen to this beautiful song. Your promise I won't 
You know, many people, when they come to understand uh, about Jesus, their mind has to grow bigger. Their heart has to become softer. Because there's many people that say, well, I, I don't fit into that camp. I don't go to church. I I'm not really a follower of Jesus. I I'm not a religious person. All of those things are there. Some even in here or some watching online, you may be from other religions, from Hinduism or Sikhism. Or may, maybe you're one celebrating Ramadan, but guess what? Jesus loves you. He's still your shepherd, my friends. In fact, when I, 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 one last verse. The next verse says this, I have other sheep too that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also, Jesus said. They will listen to my voice. Listen to Jesus. And there will be one flock with one shepherd. Did you hear that? Jesus is for all humanity. He's for all of us. He's for young people. He's for ones that are older. He, he's for every national group. It doesn't matter. You may have celebrated other religious activities, but Jesus wants to reveal himself to you personally right now. Can we lift our hands in the air? And just lift our hands as an act of surrender to Jesus. On this Good Friday, wherever you find yourself today, if you're in your household, it doesn't matter. You can, you can join us right here in this flock, this, this uh, sheepfold of Jesus. And let's just pray to, to, to Almighty God. Let's say, Heavenly Father. See, there's only one creator. Say it out loud. Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you. I thank you for Jesus. He is the good shepherd. I receive you, Jesus, as my shepherd. I will follow you, Lord. I lead me. Guide me. Direct my life. Help me to live for you. Reveal yourself to me. And I will serve you from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I love you, too. Wow. You can put your hands down. You know, when we pray a prayer like that, something supernatural happens that can only be done by Almighty God. It, the Bible helps us understand that the Spirit of God comes and lives on the inside of us and makes us new, refreshes us, but makes us new from the inside out. And this is a time where we celebrate what Jesus did. It's not just that he was a shepherd. It's that he sacrificed himself for us. He paid the price for your sin and mine so that we could have that relationship with Almighty God. Joe, why don't you help us so as we... the cup, just pull that first film back and take the wafer. You got your crackers at home? Represents Jesus' body. I always like to break it because it was broken for me. Thank you. It reminds me that Jesus' body was broken so that I could walk in freedom and hope. 
so that I could have life. Let's take together. You pull back that foil layer. And get your juice now. now. This is representative of the blood of Jesus that was actually shed for us. The Bible helps us understand that it's the shedding of blood, innocent blood like Jesus, that makes us right with Almighty God, takes away our sin. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Let's drink the juice together. Thank you, dear Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is so good so precious to us. That name of Jesus is above every name. Jesus. You know, many of you may have prayed that prayer for the first time. Don't, don't run away on us. We're going to sing just a little bit. And then I'm going to talk to you about a little gift I have for you. But I want us to Jesus. declare the name of Jesus. Our great shepherd. Is that right? Our good shepherd. So if you're here in a church building, why don't you stand up? If you're at home, you can do that as well. And why don't you sing? Because we're going to declare Jesus' life over your household, over your family.
See, when we're praying in the Holy Jesus. Spirit, he reveals Jesus. things. And I, I can see it's like uh, the enemy tries to throw thoughts in people's mind to say, oh, yeah, that's not important. No, you can live your own way. You can live this. And, and anxiety starts to rise up inside. And there's that struggle that goes on on the inside. But Jesus says no to that now. Cast down those imaginations. Let your thoughts go to things above and not the things around. And as we do that, the clarity of thought and mind is going to come in. And the peace of God is going to explode on the inside of you. So even when the enemy tries to come in, guess what? The Spirit of God raises up a standard against him and he shall not prevail. So we declare those freedom of of thought and mind that anxieties would be gone out of minds now in the name of Jesus. We pray for our students coming into exam season and we declare peace that blossoms forth from inside the heart of Almighty God and in their heart and fills their mind with the peace of God. And Lord, that you bring the right thoughts back on exam day but no anxiety in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Can we just lift our hands just to worship you just a little bit? Thank you, Jesus. Just start to worship in yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you won't bother the others if you just speak quietly. You can worship in your own language if you want, whatever that language is. 
Jesus, it's all right. You can talk to Jesus. He understands all language. Use your native language if you desire to. But just start to worship Him. Just worship Him. Yes, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. So worthy, Lord. So worthy, Lord. So worthy, Lord. So worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, we worship you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I trust that the Word of God impacted your heart just the way it did mine. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that right now. And then tell a friend so they can join us and be online with us each week. If you'd like to help us be able to continue this ministry around the world, you can do so by clicking the link below. And I believe God's gonna bless you as you bless many others. 
Have a great week. God bless you.